Hey guys, let's look at some more uh, graphing, and boy, more of these ones that don't graph perfect lines, but the good news is uh, you can draw your own line. And whether it looks like this, you might have a line that looks like that, your, might, your line might look kind of like this, or maybe even like this, to try to get more of those on the other end, who cares? The uh, point is that your answers will almost never in a million years be the same ones in the back of the book. But if they were somewhat, if they're somewhat close and you've drawn a good, a decent halfway line, count it as right and go to the next problem. Just kind of make sure you're somewhat, you're really close. But anyway, um, let's do one of these. Uh, we can choose any one of these lines you want. Draw an estimate of the line. I don't know. I mean, let's, how about this? Wink. There we go. Okay. Write the equation that expresses salt as a function of carbon. Don't forget, anytime anybody ever asks you in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Trigonometry, Calculus, Brain Surgery, uh, whatever, you write y equals slope x plus y-intercept. Your job is to find the slope and the y-intercept, okay? You can fix these x's and y's later, okay? You can, in other words, this will be your x is the carbon and then the salt will be the y. All right, so let's do it. Um, again, we need a slope here. So I don't know, I mean, let's pretend, I don't know. Let's say this is a point right here, and then that's a point. Good enough, okay? We know it's positive, right? The thing's going up to the right, so it's gonna be positive. So we can go, okay, well, the rise, that's the top frac part of the fraction, right? So it looks like we are at zero here, okay? That, so we are going up to three right there, right? That's what we're doing. So the top of this is going to be, we'll say y equals 3 on top and something on the bottom, plus b, okay? Well, in the same amount of space that we went up 3, we went from, what is each one of these on the bottom? Each one of these lines? 20, right? Okay. We went from 20 over to 60, right? Okay. So 20 to 60 would be 40, right? So 3 over 40. Go ahead and turn this into, and you're going to need your calculator here. So turn 3 over 40 into a decimal, okay? And 3 over 40 will be 0 0.075. Now the next question is, what's the B, okay? Well, we don't know this. But all we need to do, remember, when we graph these, we need to have a value for an X and a value for a Y. And we, then we got B, we got it. So I would, again, choose the easiest possible one you can choose. So it looks like over here the x value is 20, while the y value is 0. So the x is 20, and the y is 0. So let's just plop that right in here. So the y is 0, 0. 0 0.075 times 20 plus b, all right? All right, let's see here. That'll give us 0 equals uh, 1.5 plus b which means b will be negative 1.5, okay? We got it, there it is. So we have our equation, y is equal to m is what, 0.075x and then minus 1.5. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and, and uh, change the y, change the x, and your x is gonna be the carbon, yoink, and then your s or y will be the salt, and there you go. Just to show you, look at this answer. The book, when they did the exact same problem, they got a couple of answers. They got 0.075C minus three. I got minus 1.5. The book also has another possible answer, 0.11C minus 5.75. Either one of those three is good. When you get something close to that, check it. Look at the back of the book. If it's reasonably close, go to the next problem. You got it, okay. That's all there is to those, all right? Here is a slight twist, what we're gonna do, uh, looking at positive and negative uh, polar coordinates. So this is interesting. So get out a piece of graph paper, and let's figure this out together. Um, interesting little uh, way of doing this. Anyhow, um, let's go, we're gonna write the coordinates for this uh, point. Don't forget that R and U are basically synonymous with X and Y. Okay, so what we can do is we can go, all right, we can see, I mean, you know what, they did it for us, for heaven's sakes. If they tell you 4 and 3 are your R and the U, well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, that's how you find the length of uh, the line, the hypotenuse of this. 
and we already know this, so we can write this as, you know, um, basically, oops, excuse me, that's going to be 5, and then our little doohickey there, that's, you know, 36.87 degrees, and there you go. In other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 36.87 degrees from the origin to find your, you know, whatever raft out on the ocean, but, uh, excuse me, I, I, I'm going to go 5 miles, let's say. The uh, guy looking for you has to know, though, how many degrees to, to go. Otherwise, he goes five miles every which way to know how to find you. That tells him. Okay. The second way we do this, of course, remember, usually we start at the x-axis and go counterclockwise to find the degree when we're working with uh, polar coordinates. The other way to go is to go backwards, which means you start here and you go all the way around like that. Okay, so in other words, you go 90, you go 180, you go 270. And the question is, what is this angle right here? I mean, how much more do you need to get yourselves to 36.87? Here's a trick you can do if you'd like. You can take whatever this number is, 36.87, and you can subtract it from 360 degrees, all right? that will give you your negative angle. In other words, you're the guy looking for this guy in this ship, or the, the raft. You know you have to go exactly five miles out, and he lets you know your his coordinates, and then bam, you know how to, you have to go 36.87 degrees to find him. Another way of saying it is you can go backwards and all the way around here, bam. And you can say, okay, since this is 323.1, Three. All right, he can tell you this. You go five miles and you go negative degrees, 323.13. That's the other way of writing the angle as a negative angle. That's all there is to it. Okay, so you can actually do this. Um, so go ahead and take a piece of graph paper. And you know, you don't need graph paper, this is fine. You can just write it out yourself as best you can. Write four and then negative 210 degrees in rectangular coordinates. You can go R and U, X and Y, whatever. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, well, we know the four, you know, the guy's going, okay, four miles out to find your raft. The only question is, it's negative, all right? Okay, so what we do is, again, we're not going to go four and then go, oh, 90, 180, then, oh, 30 down here. That would be positive. This is negative 210 degrees. So we're gonna go clockwise. So we're gonna go, uh, there's 90, there is 180, and then how many more degrees do we need to go to get to 210? 30, right? Okay, so here's your triangle. Let's pretend that's a five. And then this will be 30 degrees right here. Okay, so we're looking for R and we're looking for U, all right? Okay, and we're going to have to find R and U using uh, the cosine, sine, tangent, and so on. All right. Okay, well, let's do R first. Okay, and again, let's look at the, we're looking at this degree right here, 30 degrees. This is the adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse is defined as cosine, right? Okay, so the cosine of 30 degrees is the same thing as R over 5. Okay. Well, let's find the cosine of 30 degrees. So, uh, well, let's see here. All right, we have 30, and then cosine 0.866. Okay, all right, so we got it. So 0 0.866, you probably remember this. R over 5 is going to be over 1. Just multiply that by 5. And over 5 equals 4.33. Okay, so we have figured the R is 4.33. There we go. All right, let's find the U. And the U, of course, is the opposite side, and we can do that over the 5 again if we want to. So uh, we have, that's going to be sine, that's by definition sine of 30 degrees equals U over 5. Oh. See if you remember what sine of 30 degrees is. So 30, and then sine, and that's
that's 0.5, okay? And of course we multiply that by 5 and we're going to get 2.5. So u is going to be 2.5, right? If u is 2.5, we have our coordinates, okay? And don't forget, since you are doing, uh, since the, you know, the triangle is on this side of the, we'll call it the x-axis here, and this is going to be a negative 4.33. And for the r, the u will be 2.5, and it is positive because this is going up. Okay. All right. How was that? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and give the practice set a whirl. Take a pause, and then uh, come back in just a minute. By the way, it just occurred to me before I get back. The I did I said four that I was doing here, uh, but I meant to say five. That should be five right there. So anyhow, <laughs> get slightly different answers with the number four. But anyway, we did it correctly. Okay, so I'm assuming you've paused it. Let's take a look. Uh, five negative two thirty. Well, we're gonna go again. Usually we go counterclockwise. Was gonna go clockwise this time. So we got ninety. We got one eighty. How many degrees more do I need to move to get to 230 degrees? Okay, I'll just draw my, you know, pathetic looking triangle here. Okay, well this will be five of course, and this is going to be 50 degrees, right? 50 degrees right there, okay. And we'll do our R, and we'll do our U, okay. So now we're gonna figure out R, so we'll do the cosine of 50 degrees is R over five. All right, what is the cosine of 50 degrees? I don't have the slightest idea. Any more than the difference between tan and beige. Well, I'll be, it's 0.766, okay. Multiply that by five, and 3.83, we'll call it, okay. So we got this, 3.83, and don't forget that's gonna be negative three, Oops, 3.83 because that's going to the left on the number line. Okay, so we got sine now of 50 degrees. That'll be u over 5. What's the sine of 50 degrees? I don't have the slightest idea anymore. I know the difference between burgundy and magenta. Okay, wait, I just did that. That can't be right. I must have pushed the cosine. Let me try this again. All right, I'll clear that out. So 50, and we're going to get the cosine this time. Aha! I knew I did something wrong. Okay, so multiply that by 5. That's the cosine. That'll be 3.21. Okay, so that should have been the R. This should be 3.21. All right, this one, the U... Oops. Is the sine of 50? I'll just double check this. Sine of 50. There we go. Times 5, and there we go. 3.8. Oops. 3.83. Okay. All right, and that'll be it. Uh, so I'm going to rearrange that. So it's negative 3.21r plus 3.83 u, and there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, let's take a look at the equation of this line. So pause it and give this a shot and see what you can find. All right, I have moved to an exciting new color, and I just, I don't know, I'm just doing this best I can. Oh, look at here. That looks like a point right there. And, I don't know, we'll just call that a point. How about that? Kind of a long way away, for heaven's sakes. Okay, so first thing I'm doing is y is equal to slope x plus the y-intercept, okay? What is the slope? Heck if I know. Let's see here. Um, it looks like each one of these is 1 going across this way. So this is going to be 101 
And well, let's do this first. Let's go, let's go up and down, the rise and the run. So we'll have y is equal to rise over run plus b. I'll hold off on that a second. All right, so I'm starting, it looks like, at 100, 95, 90, 85, and then 80 right here. Looks right. Okay, so I'm starting at 80. I'm going all the way up to right there. That's 125. So from 80 to 125 would be 45. So that's my top. All right, in the same space, it's here to here. That is 99 all the way to 105. That's only six, okay? Well, 45 divided by six, we can go ahead and just write. That is 7.5. All right, 7.5x. All right, now we need to find out what the y-intercept is. Well, the way we do that is to find an easy value for x and for y and then figure out what we get, okay? I'm calling this as my point. So I'm saying that is 99 for the x. So I'm gonna go x is equal to 99, All right? Okay, and I'm saying the y is equal to 80. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so the y is 80. 80 equals 7.5 times 99. Good heavens above. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 742.5. That is too much, anyway. Plus b. So b is going to be 80, or yeah, 80 minus 742.5, which will be negative 662.5. Oh, that's a nice even number, isn't it? Okay. Yeesh. Okay, so we'll, let's just stick it back in here. And we get our y equals 7.5x minus 662.5. And, of course, if you wanted to go ahead and write this as carbon and hydrogen and all that jazz, we would just use the h would be the uh, y. And c would be the x minus 662.5. Now let me tell you something, you, there ain't no way in the world your, your answer is going to be the same as mine. Absolutely no way. Uh, so if yours is somewhat kind of, if you have a thousand here or 200 or 100 or 59, negative 59, whatever, and yours is 4.8 or 9.2 or 6.7 or 7.3 or whatever, close enough, zing to the next problem. Do it. Okay. All right. See you next time. Have a good day.